coming down. Not as much damage as they need to be. What again should be thrown out as well. My computer's still around. Dragon's in the game. He's still here. He's got all the reads. And then there's another one pulled in. It's going to get Europe as well, instantly shot down, that Talia not doing a huge amount there, but it's going to be obliterated in the process, and looks like the Ravens trying to hunt us, actually pointed out the, the, the point that defense drones, battle troops are throwing down, the amount of cannons, but here come the Vipers. What's up guys, hello and welcome back to Heart of the Swarm Exhibitions, the series where we take Heart of the Swarm and do some fun stuff like King of the Hill, 2v2v2v2, 1v1v1v1v1v1, 1v1, 1 v 1 v 1 v 1 v 1 v 1 v 1 free for all, 8 man, free for all, 1v1 at the end. Um, pretty cool week we got in store for everyone. Yesterday we had the King of the Hill, today we're going to have a 2v2v2v2, tomorrow's free for all, Thursday's show match, Friday is going to be um, another King of the Hill. My name is Axel Taz, joined by Axel. Did you enjoy yourself yesterday? I did. I thought it was Heart a lot of fun. Heart of Storm is fun. There's a lot of new stuff, a lot of cool kind of uh, new techniques people are using, especially with that. The Mothership Core is pretty awesome. Yeah. The Widow Mines are pretty awesome. Uh, Medivacs that heal forever. What did you call that spell? The Unbeatable spell. The, no, you said Win the Game spell. Win the Game spell, that's Your it. Your memory, Mr. Axel. We'll work I'm on sorry, it. I'm sorry. We'll work on it. It's fine. Um, but a lot of it was a lot of fun yesterday. Of course, uh, a little bit of a recap. Cats ended up winning four games in a row, and then we had to get into your show rules of engagement, so we had to cut out that off a little bit short. But that will be resuming on Friday. And should I say who Cats is going to play? Should I say it? We just keep him in suspense. Okay, we'll keep him in suspense. But let me tell you this: I don't like giving my money away. So <laughs> or MLG's money away. So I found challenger. someone good to play against Cats. Uh, to play against Cats in their final game. Right now we have everyone in the lobby for this two v two v two v two v two. Just waiting on Mr. Juby. Well, you know, Cats was doing pretty well there, right? He took out four people. He can just play on his own. Yeah. Give him a computer, because you can play oh, that's right. with the computers, and the computers talk to computer you. Computer and save, maybe? Or computer easy? Which one? I guess there's a middle Medium. I do, Medium. I do hard. You do or hard? very hard. I do very hard. Very if, hard. if they're okay. playing against all these other pros, I would yeah. do very hard. Um, but yeah, we got stuff going on every day, and we're open to suggestions. So if you have something you want to see in Heart of the Swarm, there's a cool, uh, there's a cool game you want to see. Of course, here's our current schedule. Mondays and Fridays, King of the Hill. Tuesday, there's that uh, team free-for-all. Wednesday, we got that, uh, you know, the, the regular free-for-all. And Thursday, this Thursday, is going to be a show match between um, White Rot and Dragon. And that should be fun. And this is going to continue last week. Of course, this is all uh, open to change based on your, your feedback. It's, it's static this week. But next week, I mean, I, I'm, I'm willing to try some new things. So again, uh, tweet me at AxelToss or at ISAxLab, and we can figure that out. Still trying to find out where Juby is here. He's on the way, apparently, according to Mr. Mr. Katz. This is on the way. Okay. Of course. Uh, well, you know, when you play 2v2 with someone, mm -hmm. like Katz and Jury have played a lot of 2v2. Probably more yes. than anybody has ever played 2v2. In. Well, no, there's probably some gold diggers there. But as far as competitive players, they've played more 2v2 than anybody else has. And uh, they get homie beacons on each other. Yes. So, like, Katz knows where Jury is everywhere. So you know where Machine is, in theory. Yes. What is he doing right now? Uh, he's in Phoenix. Okay. Uh, having a drink. Okay. What is he drinking? He's drinking, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Someone verify this. It's like he's watching right now. He's like, this guy's ridiculous. Um, no, I get that a lot, too. Yay, Juby. Uh, I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually a twin, so I get that a lot, right? Yeah. Like, oh, what is your what is your sister doing right now? First they ask me if she's hot. But then they ask me, oh, what is she doing right now? Because they're supposed to have some sort of mind thing. But we don't, I promise. That's not how it works. Um, all right. Juby's joining the lobby. Now, should we introduce the players or announce who's actually going to play in this? They're all in the lobby. We'll do that, we'll do that during the game. Ready, yeah, ready, ready. Let's get ready. started. Asking uh, if the players are ready, and hopefully you have to ask three see. times. If you ask the players already ask, once, there's eight players, so shouldn't I ask eight times in theory? In theory, yes, but that's a lot of typing. Let's see, what a lot of typing. Say. I'm just gonna. Go. Uh, so what well, we're gonna start, we could go over the players. We have Cats and Jerby, very well-known 2v2 team. We have uh, the defending champion QXC. Yep. Right. He won the last 2v2. QXC and Trimaster. Uh, except he's with a new ally this time. Yes. QXC is with Sasquatch, a new complexity team. They're going to try to hold down their 2v2v2v2 champion's throne yet again. And uh, another team is going to be Desro and Trini XY. Yes, we saw him yesterday. We did. Mm -hmm. He was... Uh, he lost to Kansas. Today. He's Protoss. He was Protoss. Can we okay. show the, the map screen really quick? Can we show my, my screen? There we All go. Right, here, th this is a treat right here because there's the map. 
That's, it's, it's, it's the map. That's the map. It's darkness, man. Yeah, I, I, I kind of... like Alien vs. Predator. I did some stuff in the map editor. So you had stuff? a little bit of a preview of it, but you're still a little bit in the dark. I, I, I know one or two things that are added. These guys are all in the dark, quite literally. Yeah, they it, spawn in the dark. Yeah, and here's how it's going. They, they don't know any... Like, if we go to one of their visions right here, they don't know what's happening on this map. They know where they are. Well, yeah, and that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the first reaction from uh, Flip Flop. Oh, am I a ref? Did I fail? Hold on. Oh, yeah. You're, you're, you're ref. You're good. All right. I'm going to throw a little smiley down there because this is going to be fun. Um, Rude War style. Gosh, I don't even know if I want to spoil this for anyone either. Uh, I'm, uh, I'll yeah, decide in a second. But let's go ahead and introduce the players in the top left-hand location. We have the two Protosses, the only Protoss Protoss team. Uh, we got Desro and Trini XY. And... Uh, yeah, they're both Protoss, so we'll have to see what kind of uh, strategies they develop. In the top right, we have Dragon. Of course, everyone knows him. And uh, Flip Flop, who we saw yesterday, too. Flip Flop is Shu. Used to be on Team LG, I think. I think he might be teamless now. I'm not entirely sure. He had a great run through at MLG. And I the... think he is teamless now. I'm not positive, though. And bottom right, we have... No, bottom left, we have QXC and Sasquatch. QXC the Terran, Sasquatch the Pink Zerk, and in the bottom right, of course, we have the Root representatives, Drooby and Cats. So in all, we have a Root team in the bottom right, we have a, a Complexity team in the bottom left. In the top right, we have Dragon and Shu, in the top left, we have Dejro and Trini XY. So there's a little Greek. Now, let's look at the map. All right, so I added a bunch of golds here in between these two guys on the bottom. And they're all just now, they're, they're trying to figure out what's going on here. They're all scouting. Like, okay, I see that. That's kind of cool. Oh, well, look at this. Sasquatch is going to take this really quickly. I like it. We'll have to see if uh, the bottom right faction can identify this and perhaps prevent this from happening. They haven't even scouted, though. Well, you know what would have been better, maybe, is if QXC Planetary Fortress rushed that location. I like it. Because then what are they going to do, right? It's a Planetary S Fortress. Spines? I mean, yeah, yes, I guess you can just make a lot of spines. It's kind of the same thing. And, and Zerg can saturate it faster, so uh, that, that doesn't make sense. And the faster you mine that out, then you can just give up that position and say, okay. Gosh. <laughs> are those, those are rich gases, too. Yeah, Dan. I'm telling you. Wow. I did that. Um, Sasquatch is the only person who's actually scouted this. I'm, I'm going through each player and trying to see what they've scouted. And no one's really scouted the, the middle here. I mean, Cats and Juby are just not scouting that much. Yeah, you know, scouting's kind of overrated. Too. Well, like, I mean, when there's these golds. Yeah, here. but but they don't suspect that. I know. And that's 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 the reward Sasquatch gets for scouting. This yeah. is why you scout when you play. Yep. This is why because who knows? Maybe next time you play ladder. Yep. Blizzard will secretly change the map and yep. put in a ton of gold minerals at some random location. I might be hired when Blizzard sees this map as a map maker. This is true. We'll give me millions of did dollars. Did he just move every one of his drones over? I think he did. And I think... Oh, he's got like five. Cats is just now discovering this. Oh, Cats is going to lose his overload, though. Oh, no. Marine's on the way. Does he have a spawning down. pool? I, I'm, I'm going to make a prediction right here. QXC and Sasquatch are going to win. I agree. And I mean, just based on how fast... <laughs> it, look, look at this. Look at this. <gasps> Cats and Juby see this. So, like, I think so, too. And Juby immediately sending a... Bunk, sending a... Um, an SCP to make a bunker. Oh, wait. Oh, there's a Reaper. But the dragon wow. comes out of nowhere dragon with the Reaper. Coming from the top right. This he has a, his own area. This could be a 2v... Wait, wait. He went diagonally across the entire yes. map. What is he doing? He's trying to see what's up. Oh, he's going to plant their fortress rush to gold, though. Oh. He's going to help us leave. Yeah, well, he's no, just putting it here. Oh, well, do you think he'll lift it to the very middle? Oh, that would be sick. Be if he lifted it to the very middle. Good. Now his Reaper sees it. Yeah. Wow, right, so there's QXC's so many possibilities. Trying to put down a bunker here. They're desperately trying to hold this location. And Dragon is coming all the way from the top right to try to prevent this from happening. That Reaper is, now, is really yeah. <laughs> Re annoying. Remember how, how good Reapers are nowadays. Yes. Look at this. They're, I don't understand. Okay, the way I made this map, I expected the top two to fight over this expansion at the top. And well, I expected the bottom two to fight. You know what this is? This is Dragon having a lack of respect for the Protosses. He's like, you know what? The Protosses aren't a threat. I gotta deal with these people, and you know he's thinking what I thought. I thought you know QXC Sasquatch is a scary combo because uh, Terran has the strongest late game, like super late game units with Ravens, BC, Siege Tanks, BS, like, and you can kill aggressive these make yeah. kills. So, uh, but Drewby doesn't really use late game units very often. Uh, so normally he feeds cats, but cats has Zerg late game units which aren't quite as good as a Terran one. So 
that, that makes QXC, who loves playing those late game BCs, the strongest player in a 2v2v2v2v2v 2v2 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 whatever right. format. Uh, so Dragon's like, I gotta stop these guys from taking this gold. At least that, that's my uh, long okay, chain of fear. Enough. No, I, I completely agree, but look at this. We have Sasquatch taking advantage of his superior gold income, and now Druby and Cats are in a little bit of trouble. Some units are in production here from Druby, but he's uh, not making them fast enough. A lot of greed coming out here from Cats and Druby. Not enough units to deal with this just yet, and Sasquatch churning more and more lings across the field to this bottom right-hand location. And Cats and Druby are finding themselves in a lot of trouble. Wait, here. so so did Qxe and Sasquatch do that X up to the gold and kill your opponents at the same time strategy? Yes. I like it. I like it too. It's a good strategy. Any I, time where you can be like as greedy as possible and kill your opponents, that that's a good play. Yeah, and like oh, I, I, I got think a lot this, of range, this comes down. Yeah, he does. But I think this might come down to the very beginning, where you know Sasquatch and Qxe were able to identify that goal and take it really fast. Cats and Druby didn't discover that location until much, much later. It looked like they were trying just a typical 2v2 strategy when you can't necessarily do that uh, on a map like this. And oh, now... meanwhile, over at the top, yeah, yeah. Dragon is uh, getting, getting kind of punished a little bit. Yeah, he tried to take that gold. I'm not sure how many mules he was able to land that. Oh, that uh, the orbital's gonna live though, so, you know, at the end of the day, does, does he really care? Like, if he didn't lose too many SCVs, what's the big deal? Yeah, that's true. Oh no, Druby losing the last of his workers. <laughs> oh, poor cats. Poor cats Druby. and Druby they just like got map. destroyed. They didn't scout the gold. Like, whoever finds the gold first wins, well, sure, you gotta scout it, right? I, I don't actually know if that's true. Like, cats and Druby had a better economy than their opponents because they built workers where their opponents built a lot of units at the yeah. bottom left. The reason they lost, I don't think anything to do with the gold, had the fact to do that for some reason Druby didn't wall off the ramp. Uh, which I don't understand why he wouldn't when he had... Oh, I mean, he's building 18 barracks anyway, right? Yeah. All he had to do is build a wall and they would never would have died. Yeah. Because Zergians can't get through barracks. Yeah. Um, well, you can go tell Cass and, and Juby that. Yeah. Because I think they're mad at me. So. Yeah, could be. Either way, they'll, they'll forgive you. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, this puts QXC and Taskwatch oh, yeah. in a great position. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, and they're actually going to be aggressive towards the top side of the map. I bet Dragons are ready not making that a PF right now. Yeah, I would agree. <laughs> Look at this. Dez are trying to take the, the middle uh, the middle gold base now as well. You know, oh, people have the watch towers. I was going to say, no one can see the gold except for people at the watch towers yep. so they can see that middle. Otherwise, yep. someone could have snuck in there and, and, and nabbed it. Uh, but what's going to stop QXC and Sasquatch from just taking the mains at yeah. the bottom right? I don't know. And, and you know, since Cats and Druby uh, were out so early, you know, they would be the obvious answer as far as... Um, you know, being able to provide aggression towards that. But now, since they're not there, it's kind of up to Dragon, uh, Shu. They need to make, like, a peace treaty or yeah, something. Yeah, like, because they if, have if, to do... If, if they keep fighting with each yeah, other. Yeah, then the bottom left team is going to win. Yeah, it, clearly. Um, let's talk about what units are people going for. Okay. So, uh, it looks like, um, Desro and, Sh and, uh... Desro and Trini XY are going for just a lot of gateway units, a lot of high Templar. I haven't seen any Stargate units come out yet. Ooh, Dragon using that medevac drop at the top left. Oh. Into the main of, uh, of Desro. Doing a decent amount of damage to the probes. Now keep in mind, uh, the medevac does not have... Oh! oh. Boom! Recall! There it is. That's oh, Mothership Core getting targeted! Wow. Nice. Oh, but before it got targeted, he put the thing on a Nexus and used that to focus on the, the medevac. Oh, nice. Photon overcharge or overload. Photon overcharge. Overcharge. That's yeah. But now, uh, since he recalled back, he's not going to be able to protect this Nexus, oh. and all of a sudden, uh, Dragon has control of this gold, and Shu, of course, has a nice army to potentially defend that. So what is Dragon doing? He's getting. He doesn't have too many units. He just has a few siege tanks, some Marines and Marauders, but he has no medevac. He's just now getting medevacs to support him. Uh, he's been kind of reset. Yeah. And I want to uh, do a quick statement here. I mean, every watchtower. Look at look at Sasquatch playing the mind games. Where? What am I missing here? Look what he's saying. Oh, he's saying she she but she's not attacking <laughs> him. He's she's just trying to get him to fight each other so that yeah. they win even more. <laughs> All right, this should be very interesting. Uh. Um, but yeah, every watchtower here has vision of these golds. So in the very beginning of the game, if these players just send one worker to each watchtower, they'll know exactly what's going on, and that's exactly what Sasquatch did to get that advantage over Cats and Jimmy in the bottom right. Indeed, indeed. All right. So. 
Oh, look at QXC has a bunker that's totally covered by creep. Over in their golds. Yep. Look at that. Teamwork. How does that? He, he but, built the bunker first in the. Yeah, but there. but you think the marines in there would just be like terrified? Like imagine if you were a marine. Yeah. And you were told to be stationed in a bunker that's I wouldn't do literally it. I wouldn't 100%. Do it. Even it's my alley, but we do have a, a battle here in the top side of the map. Storms going down onto the army of Dragon and Shu from Desert and Trinex. Why the Archon's trying to get away? A little bit of miscommunication there, perhaps trying to tell each other to fall back, but uh, not doing so at the exact same time. The command center is starting to burn down, but there are plenty of SCVs there to potentially repair. Meanwhile, we have Zergling swinging over to the right-hand side of the map, trying to do some counter-attack action, but all this is, is well and good, but uh, you know the fact remains, QXC and Sasquatch remain untouched at the bottom side of the map. So what are they going for while they remain untouched? Looks like QXC just adding more and more barracks. More and more Marines. Uh, is he just going to do the, the pure Marine strat? Like, it, keep in mind, QXC and Sasquatch are pretty much gifted, which is m with as much economy as they want. So they can do whatever they want. They can do whatever they want. Yeah. They can choose any unit composition whatsoever. QXC says, all right, I'll just make barracks and make Marines. Yeah, Marines are pretty fun. It's yeah. like Marine Arena. It's a good unit. Um, more wars going over that top gold base. Desert's trying to make something happen, but, you know, against Siege Tanks yeah. and... This I, is what I wanted to happen at the bottom, too. Yeah. That would have been really cool. Yeah. Um... Sea Shanks, though, seem to be the superior mm -hmm. unit here just because of that extra range. 13 ranges is so much stronger. Uh, I like what Shu's doing. Oh. Shu's taking the middle base. I love it. If, I, was if, I was wondering who's going to be the first to take down these rocks and go for they've, it. They've got to make a move there. Um, because QXC Sasquatch. <laughs> it's like Desro's worried about the Shu Dragon team because they have two golds. Yeah. QXC and Sasquatch have two they're golds. They're like, they're and fine. Three of the bottom right <laughs> bases yeah. there uh, at their disposal. I like how they just don't respond. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Um, she's Shoes. saying they have more problems. Yeah, yeah. and she's right, but He's I don't right. know if will will Desro, uh, Desro and uh, and Trin X Y yeah. listen to. They reason? need tempests. Yes. That's tempests what they need mean. right now. This is what I, I wanted them to go because whenever your opponent goes siege tanks, what's what's that going to be vulnerable to? Exactly. As long as there's no ravens, the tempests are going to do it. Just a wonder. Okay, now it looks like. Uh, Trin XY finally moving on QXC, trying to do some damage, but uh, QXC's got this massive marine Lots force. Lots of investors here, too. Oh, the storms, though. Uh-oh, investors coming forward. I don't know if he has vision on the high ground. There goes the fungal growth onto the zealots oh, and the high templar. Change the templar. Oh, then there's no storms, no. and the marines are going to no kill everything. No feedbacks, either. And I don't think, I think they're all going to die even before that point. Oh, no. Without storms, how is he going to compete with this army? Yeah, Drooby and Trin XY, their army is just absolutely melting, trying to go for that engagement in the bottom left. Um, actually, De actually, I think Trin XY just went by his own there. On his own, because yeah. Desert just now coming down there to try to help reinforce, but he's going to be a little, a little too late. And, and I think we can both agree that Desro and Trin XY are in the, the, the worst, the weakest yes. position at this point yes. in time, Down considering now. the top right faction has uh, the double gold, the bottom, the the bottom left faction has everything else. <laughs> has half the map. I think it's safe to say. <laughs> Pretty much, yes. Definitely safe to say that. I would say bottom left's in the strongest position. Uh, but Chu and Dragon. Oh, Chu lost his natural expansion somewhere during that. Oh, and now all those probes are getting massacred by, by yep. Desro. Yep, great, great move here. And look at this, all these probes, uh, actually most of these probes are going to die. Does Control R even work? <laughs> Not with this many players, yeah. probably that. We can kill in the Colossus. Six kills, 12 kills, 10 kills. Oh, nice little Mothership Recall here from, or Mothership Core Recall there from Shu. You know, he needs to get Dragon to lend him like two tanks up there. These guys need Tempest. Uh, Tempest or, yeah, Tempest are just flying siege tanks, right? Yes. They need them. Oh, a drop coming in from QXC. They're really trying to deny the top. I think QXC and Sasquatch have realized that the top left is the weak team. Yep. And so they're picking on the top right. Yep. Which is smart. But they're not committing. They're just sending in some Zergians, oh. cancel that base, and then Marine drops. You know, just doing everything a little bit just to stay annoying, make sure that, that Shu and Dragon are constantly worried. While meanwhile, uh, can we check how much money people have? Because they've got to be at an. I guess we can check income. Um, resource okay. Resources. Uh, Orange Protoss actually. Desro has oh, the most wow. money. So what are what really are QXC surprising. and Sasquatch? Oh, QXC is building like 18 command centers. Yeah, Sasquatch's income is is the most superior at this point in time. This gold is about to be mined out at the bottom middle. Uh, QXC not far behind in that income either. QXC is building a lot of command centers. I'm actually a little bit surprised at how fast these these bases are mining out. Now, Sasquatch has had this base for quite a while, but. Again, that's that's a testament to the fact that uh, Katz and Druby were eliminated uh, much earlier 
So again, there's nothing to contest. Oh, a uh, big battle here in the middle of the map. Storms going down from both these players, trying to melt away the Zealots. Here come the Marines and Marauders from Dragon, trying to help reinforce, but there are no so many though. Colossi in the air. I don't see Vikings. Yeah, there's no Vikings, and then his tanks are all somewhere else. Oh gosh, and here come the Broodlords from the south. And this is the moment oh, where man. I consider turning my graphic settings down to low. Uh, as the Broodlords laying siege in the middle of the map, the Vikings leading the charge here from QXC and Sasquatch. What a great strategy. Oh, Waiting no, for your Desiree. opponents to have the big battles and then sweeping in to clean it up. I hope this is Colossi are going in there for a second. Finally, some stalkers get in there. <laughs> but big moves by QXC and Sasquatch now clearing out that the middle high ground. Yep. Uh, Dragon still has the siege tanks that ha have yet not really seen much combat, but now they're finally here, but they're not going to help much against the massive amount of Broodlords that uh, Sasquatch has. Yeah, um, this army from Sasquatch and, uh, and QXC, very nicely formulated. And I, this might be a very quick... I don't know what... I, I feel like the top two factions have to team up or something to you know, deal with the bottom. You know they team up and maybe too late. Yeah, right? that too. Can they even remax? Do they have enough money? Well, Desra still has a lot of money. I don't know uh, what he's been doing with his money. Uh, Trinax Y, though, has almost no money. Very low supply. Uh, Dragon, the same way. 120 supply, no money to his name. And uh, Shu is at 70 supply, no money. So even if they teamed up, I think they're, they'd actually... There's, they would still be significantly behind. Desert trying to do some uh, DT harassment here to the top right base again. These guys keep fighting each other. And Sasquatch and QXC are, are licking their chops because they're not being pressured at all. And, and they're, they're just building their armies more and more. QXC with a double planetary in the middle. Uh, they don't want to lose this base at all. All right, and Bester's coming forward. Fungling the entire Colossus, oh. Stalker. Uh, immortal High Templar army, storms going down, but look at this massive army here from QXC and Sasquatch. Even some ghosts here for good measure to take down those High Templars potentially. Storms still going down here from Desro and Trini XY. Trying to soften up some of that Air Force, but it, it's. <laughs> There's so much. I, you know, I don't even know if anything died. The Medivacs can reheal all, all the Zerg units that Do they have the upgrade? Use. No, they don't have the upgrade just yet. Yeah, that was an interesting choice. Can they heal not to get the upgrades too? Yes, they can. Oh, they can wow. heal every Zerg unit. That's every Zerg unit is biological. That's a pretty good composition. <laughs> Dragon is going to make his last stand, but decides to back up. Shoot with a few Colossi and Blink Stalkers. Now, here's where they should go for the sandwich. Yes. If they went for a sandwich, maybe oh, they kill a couple no. units. Oh, no. Great. <laughs> maybe they kill a couple units. Great fungals there onto the Marines and Marauders and tanks. Uh, Dragon and. Shu trying to engage this, this death army here from Sasquatch and QXC. Stalkers blinking forward, trying to target down the Broodlords. Medivacs desperately trying to keep them alive. And here come Dejro and Trini X-Rai from the other side. So this is the sandwich we were talking about, but is it a little too much? Still so many Broodlords in the air. More Stalkers are needed. Dejro, I'm not sure if he has Blink. Yes, he does have Blink available, but look at all those Infestors on the ground. Running out of energy, though. So they're actually doing a decent amount of damage here. The problem is... QXC and Sasquatch still have a ridiculous economy behind this. Well, they, they did get, like, two Broodlords. Um, yeah. You're right. A couple... I think the Vikings and Corruptors mostly died, so... Oh they, they killed something. Oh, look at that. He's seen the Red Brood... The Red Corruptors, the ones almost said more from the Broodlords. Even when they're this far ahead, taking those little details to just get a little more optimization out of his units. Uh, of course, in the Medivacs there, that technique is not really necessary as they're healed up anyway. Uh, yeah. The question is, is when are uh, the other four, the other two teams going to throw in a towel? Looks like Dragon's not ready yet. He's going to send his remaining forces on a counterattack. Base straight, I like it. I mean, you can't, like, what can you really do to this Broodlord and Fester army? I'm not so sure. Look at these medevacs actually speeding over to Dragon's base, and he's going to go for the base trade first. And QXC has nothing here to defend. It's going to take him so long as to get through his planetary fortresses, though. <laughs> Those things do not die. You can have all the tanks yep. in the world. Uh, he's going to keep repairing, and he and QXC has so much extra funds. I don't even think he needs to mine for the rest of this game. Yeah. Um, you're incredibly right. And I don't, I'm trying to think about. Oh, well, there we go. Desro killed all the investors. There is hope. <laughs> uh, nice little storms under those. Yeah, birds. softening up some of the brood. And you know, Sasquatch has no gas up. Uh, Wait, that, are you serious? Yeah. And that, I mean, that could be because he just built 12 investors. Ah. 
<laughs> he's he has 6,000 minerals and no gas up in the bank. Sasquatch said, I made 16 more. There's Joe with the friendly face. And the GG. Yeah. Um, Sasquatch and he just got control of this base so early on. Yeah. Uh, I mean, now, the funny thing is, Dragon was the only one trying to do anything about it in the was. early game. Dragon, Dragon tried, but With those reapers. Uh, it's so hard to go diagonally across the entire map. It is. You're very right. Shu's last remnants. You know, Shu did succeed in defending uh, Dragon's base from QT's master rock. Yeah. So you can call that uh, a small victory, perhaps. And like it's funny, throughout this entire process, Desra has been sending DTs into uh, the top right main. <laughs> I've been watching that. Just to, just to make Shu and Dragon have something extra to think about when they're trying to deal with this massive Brood Lord Ghost Infester. There it is. QXC Sas Sasquatch. Gosh, QXC defending champ of this. Pretty impressive play from the it Complexity is. Squad. That's the second uh, 2v2v2v2 in a row that they've won. And we're going to play another one. Yeah. I'm gonna ask these players if they're down because um, that ended pretty early. Indeed, it did. I think we do have time for another. Uh, you know, even if we just do two v two v two, well, that would kind of imbalance the response. Yeah, in that yeah, game. but we'll 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 try to set up another one, guys. Um, congratulations to QXC and Sasquatch making quick work of the other three teams. We'll have to see if anything changes um, after a quick break. Don't go anywhere. Thank you.